All right, what's up, guys? J.S. Garrett here. I'm back with my good friend, L. The Alchemist. And we're going to be talking about the up upcoming group ritual that we are performing on October 12th. How you doing, brother? I'm doing phenomenal, J.S. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing great, man. Things, uh, it's, been, it's been a really fun uh, past few months. Like, it's been really exciting. A lot of good stuff's happening. And um, I've been having a blast, man. I've been having a blast working with you and Doc, uh, getting things back where they need to be, where they used to be, where they should be. And, um, yeah, I'm just having fun, brother. Yeah, I, I agree, man. Just everything coming in and the work we're able to do and just the content we're able to keep creating, you know, it's honestly been all green light. And it's awesome to see that that same momentum is able to be picked up from the past and go forward, man. So fucking thankful to be with it oh yeah man so you've been doing anything uh fun on your free time lately you taking any trips or anywhere oh well i will be taking a trip here uh in about a week and a half to come see you and yeah. we're going to do that badass group right <laughs> and uh other than that dan just doing my other content i'm actually going uh this weekend to go shoot a ghost adventure where I got a whole camera crew and we're going to a haunted mansion. Oh, and so I'm actually going to use a radionics box and write down the address and amplify poltergeist activity to its degree. So <laughs> you, you're going to, you're going to spice up the haunting before you go in. Huh? Yeah, exactly. I well, and that's the thing. If I haven't, my other machine arrive here, I may have two machines on, you know, Anyway, just to add that extra power for it, you know, so. That's never been done before. That's fucking awesome, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, there we go. And I'll have it documented. And it's going to be my first episode of Spooky Alchemy. Uh, it's going to be a little subsection on some things I'm doing. But, yeah, I just, it kind of came came to me, you know, like, there's a lot of things I do and enjoy, you know, from working out to the kids show I'm working on to my magic and I was just like, you know what? Besides my music, like, what else could I go do? I could go to the places that are haunted near me, get it on camera, and start documenting things, you know? And it's a black magic's point of view versus, oh, my gosh, everything's a demon, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's always a demon. If it's if it's scary or bad, it must be a demon. It's, it's, yeah. Demons generally have better things to do than to hide out in the closet to scare grandma, you know? Hundred percent, man. But there is some really, you know, dark human spirits out there too that haunt places. So I mean, like one's just as powerful as the other, man. The human soul, I mean, we are we are godlike in our soul form, you know. So if you figure after someone passes, if they, you know, stay in a house or whatever, attach themselves to something and they have a hundred years to get really good at throwing shit around and you know, vampirizing people for power and shit, then they're going to be pretty goddamn powerful. And if they're an asshole, then they're going to be an asshole. It doesn't mean they're a demon. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And usually people transcend into the other dimension is yeah. typically who they are, you know? Like, if they're a person that fed on negativity being, like, a psychic vampire, they're going to probably be that on the other side. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's why having their protection is huge. And having that up, and I was going to plug this at the end. I'm plugging it right now. You know, our 100 killer system for the rest of this month, October 1st to 31st, we have our last machine. Instead of being just another of the wish boxes connected, it will be a war machine. It's a free upgrade. So definitely want to have that. I mean, especially if you're going to go inside of some haunted places or, you know, have your own adventures and all that, like, it's going to make sure things aren't sticking on to you, you know, because that, that shit can happen, too. I mean, that's why I like to pay my respects before I go to, into a graveyard and not run amok like when I was a teenager. You know, just run on through and kind of being disrespectful. It's like yeah. you just always have to have your honor and homage, you know, whether it's with a spirit of a human or an entity. <laughs> oh, nice. Look at I that bad boy. Yeah, uh, my buddy Vincent Sanchez sent me uh, actually a whole bag of different, like, really high-quality cigars from the last group right that we did, uh, the one I did with J.D. Temple uh, a couple months ago. Um, and this was one of them, and I was like, yeah, I need to try this. So uh, <laughs> a little uh, cigar chopper here. 
He sent oh, me a cigar chopper too. He's like, just in case you don't have one. <laughs> Hail Vincent, man. Hail Vincent. Fuck yeah. He, he sent me a giant box of different kind of specialty beers too a while back. Like, uh, he's like, hey man, I sent you a package. And so I go to the post office to pick it up and then they wheel it out on a cart because it weighed like 70 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> like, and the lady couldn't pick it up. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was full of individually uh wrapped beers that were like wrapped in bubble wrap to keep them from banging around and breaking none of them broke and uh yeah dude i had like six months worth of beer to try on my live stream it's awesome so, <laughs> first here cheers to that man yeah mm. take a second to get light up here man that's i'll tell you what and i, I haven't had a bad boy like that in probably about two years that's a celebratory cigar right there, though. I'll tell you what. Food, dude. I like it. Mm. <laughs> See, what's it called? It's uh, called a Royal Oak. Sun-grown Royal Oak. Well, I'll tell you what. That right there, Royal, that's uh, the kingmanship oh. and queenmanship group well, right right there. That's a royalty right there. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're really here to talk about tonight is the group right, the upcoming group right that we're going to be performing together in person on October 12th. Uh, you're actually going to be flying into me uh, where I live, and I have uh, a lot of roosters and a very large ritual space uh, that I'm already setting up for this. So it's going to be awesome. It's going to be badass. This is a ritual that you created. You you. You created this through through however you create, you know, communing with spirits or or uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, sounds like a badass ritual to me. I think that it's going to uh, yield some really awesome results. And we've already got like a, a substantial amount of signups for this. Like I wasn't going to put a cap on it because I didn't think we'd have to. But if it keeps going at this rate, we might have to say, OK, we can't take any more. Um, but yeah, it's uh it's like the energy's already fucking building for it, man. I'm I'm really excited. So you want to tell me like how you came up with this ritual and what exactly it's designed to do? Yeah. Uh so it it started it with a year ago, uh, working with King Bella. It was my first pact. And at the time I didn't know it was gonna have a time cap on it. But there was an energy sacrifice on the behalf to King Bella for this whole pact. And as I went on this journey, I learned that my desire that I took to the king at the time was not the desire which my higher self took to the king at the time. And learned how to become a greater king in my own path and finding that pathway to knowing not only where my vision is at, because I've had right on Santolak, and I was granted the vision of things I needed to do to produce the amount of wealth in which I would, you know, desire for my prosperity. But King Bella was able to show me actually the path on the steps to do and the people who were helping me and the people that were leeching me in my life. And so throughout this process, I've changed as an individual from the warrior to the king. And I've seen how to grow my empire greater, grander, understanding if someone's a plus or a minus, feeling that intent, knowing that on the offset, you know, so you don't have to waste any time or attention or money on growing that fruit because you know what's good, what's not. And I have just having the underlying current of either a king if you're a male or a queen if you're female. Uh, what you want, desire, and the boldness to take charge of having control of going after it. So that's like if you're in a job and you want to go up and someone's kind of giving you shit, you're going to be bold action and speak your why you deserve that and really why they shouldn't deserve that because you know what you're worth. Your self-worth is number one. And so learning all this, it, it all just came together, you know, uh, figuring out, you know, some things we were going to work on coming into town and realizing, like, you know, what what's people really want? And something that I've been learning in my own path uh, throughout this working, and King Bell finally just came out and said it, is, you know, if you're going to do a group right, 
it's not for this set or the other uh, outside of like wishing something's going to be good. It's about giving someone that initiation through King Belleth and Santolov into the current of starting your path working with a massive amount of energy behind it to help project you forward to be able to get to that king or queen self in which you desire to become. And so with, you know, the vision and the maneuverability and knowing who's right and what's wrong inside of your path to wherever you're trying to bring your empire, this right here is going to take you there. Like, and this is definitely going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity, you know, uh, for myself. And I know for you doing a sacrificial right is a sacred very very sacred thing and to take that respect and homage for that animal and doing the ritual you know that's just that much more power because it has so much meaning and this right here is a right that has to be done i mean it's a part of my path working it's actually the ending of my path working for my year pact and i know that from how potent it's been for my whole entire experience and where I am now, and now doing this ritual with you, as well as what Santolux I know done for both of us, this right here is going to be an atomic bomb of massive change. And uh, I'm just honored to be able to do this and uh, really uh, being allowed by King Bella to do this on everyone's behalf that does this ritual. So it's a part of the path working, and I think it's going to be that perfect... Uh, ending to that path working and then onward to my next oh yeah man well uh i'd say that was like a excellent answer to that question it's a great description of what this is about and uh, it sounds like something i would want to sign up for so mm -hmm. i look forward to uh participating in it and being a part of it doing it here on my property oh mm -hmm. you know like like whoever ends up living here after me <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna have like a, a permanent open gateway to the underworld in the backyard, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. That, and that's you know what, man? It's a magical house, man. Yeah, I'll cheers to that one, dude. I'll cheers to that one. Cheers to that one. Oh my god. And uh anyone that wants to sign up, you have till the twelfth at noon. Because I wanna make sure to have everyone when I'm doing this right, there's a few things I was instructed to do. And I want to make sure I have all the supplies for every individual who's going to be showing up there. And one of the parts of the ritual is a rose. And it was really significant because I was getting roses for King Belleth. And a rose on your behalf, and I'm going to use Poly Santos and clean that rose. And so it's a representation of that purity of your desire and it being purified, getting rid of all that extra bullshit all that muck, whether it's people around you, generational muck, whatever muck it is, to give you that shiny new start and get rid of that chaos of bullshit of not knowing what or where direction you're going and shoot you with momentum towards that. So just making sure that we can have that by noon on the 12th. We will have to shut that down. And then also uh, to do the juggernaut right, uh, I have to be in specific places. So by the 11th of October, which is from when this video comes out, 10 days from then, uh, you have to sign up for the Juggernaut Ritual. And it's a phenomenal ritual, and I'd be more than happy to do it for anyone else. I mean, while I'm there, I might have to do that for us both because that oh, I mean, yeah. it's definitely a projectile towards this abundance of taking care of business like a fucking beast so uh anyone just make sure you have that and we also have for this month the genesis 2.0 box with the psionic helmet for the price of i believe it's i forget what the exact price is but that's also on discount so this month of october we have a lot of uh just ritual from this group right to different things with the radionics going on so definitely hop in because this is the best this is my favorite month of the year so i was just about to say man that's why they're doing that's why we're doing this is because it's it's uh october like this mm -hmm. is my favorite time of the year to practice like there's there's something about the energy in the atmosphere during october yeah 
fall and Halloween, like that just, uh, I don't know what it is, man, but the, the veil thins and the energy's heightened and it's, yeah. it's has to do workings during October. That's like, that's when things like, that's like looking back in memories of like that. Some of what I've done, like my craziest fucking rituals was in the month of October. So. Oh man. And that's what I'm stoked about this too. Like, I love October for so many different reasons, all that you touched on. But then to be able to do a massive write like this, my biggest write this year, dude, I mean, probably the rest of the year. Oh, man, like, uh, I'm ready for it. We just had the eclipse. We have the path work ahead. And, you know, all we can do is add more power to our path and make sure we can knock down all the bullshit obstacles, man. So. Uh, I look forward to doing this with you, man, and uh, everyone definitely sign up for this if you want to take your elevation to the next level, 100%. Yeah, I think it's uh, definitely going to be worth it. It's definitely going to be, uh, like I said, it's like the intensity's already building, so uh, I can only imagine what it's going to be like. Hey, I got right now uh, a box that's collecting energy for the ritual too. You know, that's something that's really just awesome when it comes to these boxes. Doing the ritual radionically then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, uh, the box, man. Uh, my friend Knox, um, it's Novelties by Knox on Facebook. That's the guy that nice. makes stuff. Like he does like laser engravings and sigils. So he made me this box. It's like a prototype. Oh, yeah. wow. He brought it over to me early this morning. But, uh, yeah, I, I was thinking about doing spell kits uh, for people. I have, like, a lot of requests for people, from people asking me to, like, put together spell kits, you know, that come with, like, everything, including the box that you bury in the graveyard in or whatever. Yeah. Um, you put the master key on that, and uh, this is something that he made me uh, for my birthday. It's <laughs> shamanic, shamanic spankings, and it's got the master key on it. And, dude, I'll tell you what. If I haul off and whack a motherfucker's bare ass hard enough with this, it leaves a perfect master key imprint on that butt cheek. So, <laughs> God, best birthday present I've ever got. <laughs> you better watch that. You better not cry. You're getting that on your ass. And that's great. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's like an initiation for everybody that comes over and does rituals for me. <laughs> I figured I'd better warn you on this on this podcast. <laughs> oh, that's what I, damn, dude. Wow, it really is. It really is that way, man. I mean, I got the master key around my neck, and so I'm going to have it on my left cheek, too, man. It's the initiation. Yeah, yeah, and then we go to the tattoo shop and get it tatted on the imprint. <laughs> <laughs> I have to put a stencil down. Like, it's already there, you know? You know, just as long as it's leveled, you know, and it's, like, proper with my cheeks and it's not at a weird angle, I'll be very, very thankful, dude. Yeah, you, you don't want to get it crooked, man. It'll look funky, so. Yeah, you know, we, we might have to we might have to whack it a few times to get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Dude. Hey, that's one thing I love about you, motherfucker. You have a good sense of humor. Like, you're funny, dude. <laughs> Hey, man, you know what? It, when it comes to magic, there is the intensity aspect of it where, you know, it's like your heart, your a essence, you know, like truly being all in. But then there is also the like, dude, I'm just going to wear, you know, shorts and a T-shirt, go do my ritual out there and uh, be real. You know, at the end of the day, like and plus magic does change things. But reality is reality, man. And we have to be tapped in, you know, not just be some, oh, bippity boppity boot. Uh, let me go grab my magic wand here. So, uh. you know, I'm proud to say that I have never worn a hood and a robe during a ritual. And I've never worn any type of costume of any kind. I'm either like wearing blue jeans and a black t-shirt or fucking naked when I'm doing <laughs> Like I've never dressed up. You wow, I, I I definitely I definitely wore a black hood, went to an a like this abandoned fucking shack in a forest to do my first ritual. But that was, after that, I could someone end up seeing me when I was leaving, and I was like, you know, I was, if I just look normal, I could do this anywhere. Well, I was just getting ready to say like that is the reason that our ancestors wore like hoods and robes when they were out mm. in the doing the rituals is in case anyone saw them it would protect their identity because they could get burned at the stake for it 
Um, so now that's not the case. Uh, now, just like you said, if you get caught walking around in the woods wearing a black hood and a robe, like, you know, like you're, you're a witch. <laughs> as far as, you know, they might, uh, they might, uh, you know, be your neighbors or whatever. But um, I, I, I don't think that, uh, you know, there are certain rituals that call to like ador adorn certain sigils uh, when working with certain entities. You're supposed to wear their sigil. Um, so I can see like making a robe or you know, in my case, I buy a T-shirt or make a T-shirt um, mm -hmm. as that sigil on it instead of like doing the robe thing. But uh, yeah, uh, luckily uh, they can't burn us at the stake anymore. So there's, you know, the hood and robe thing is it's just for show now. Mm hmm exactly yeah. at the end of the day you can wear whatever you want but are you doing the fucking work and that's the one of the biggest things i gotta say you know that's anyone can be an armchair magician but like you gotta get wet and honestly one thing i respect the fuck out of you is that you've told everyone about your working with belial and how much that fucking changed your life and i know my workings with him fucking changed my life and who i am and so Anyone that can initiate with a current such as Belial and fucking walk out as a new person, you're already a type of motherfucker. You know what I mean? And like, he's he, goddamn man. That's all I can say. He's hail to him. Holy shit, man. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that, man. That's really nice of you to say. And you know, the one thing that I took away from that whole experience is to stay humble. You know. Yeah. Um, it definitely humbled my ass, and uh, that that ego death term that people throw around—that's real. Uh, that's that's some painful shit, bro. So uh, I appreciate it, but you know that's that's the reason that that I don't get too big for my fucking britches because that's that's the number one downfall you see of people in the occult field. You know, they come into this field, they learn a little bit, they get a taste of that that raw power and godhood, you know, the, the, the feeling of godhood that comes from being able to create change in this reality and bend reality to your will. Like after you do that about 30, 40 times and you're hundred percent convinced that it is you doing it, none of it is coincidence. Then they start to get that, you know, their head starts to swell. They start to get that God complex that, um, you know, I can, fucking pick a fight with anybody complex whatever and uh, that's that's when you get humbled um that's actually that's when you get destroyed it's like doing a path working the idea is to like you know for you to go through that ego death and be humbled before you get to that point so that you don't get to that point you stay mm -hmm. humble about your path working and um you know nobody's fucking perfect we all got egos but keeping that shit in check or having a, a memory, a stone cold memory seared into your brain that keeps you in check. Yeah, that's that's, that's exactly what you said. That point where you get that quote ego death and go through that fucking harshness and then you eventually get out of it. It's yeah. a scar that you'll always remember. And that's a huge thing. I mean, when I lost my dad, like that shit is burned into my uh, memory and like how much time and care and attention I have for individuals who are around me in my circle, I may definitely think about the time I'm using because you don't have so much time on this planet. And so do you want it to be zapped or enhanced, you know? And so you have to have that in check. And plus when I'm doing rituals, asking for a spirit's assistance and I have a manifestation, I'm in gratitude, you know, because if you're over here saying, Oh, I can do whatever I want, this and that, then you're starting to realize like, I don't know, you, you really get a foggy essence because you're too busy saying, I can do all these things, when in reality, it's like, I'm grateful that these spirits are working with me and that they're continually working with me. My life is tapped into that essence of magic. And, like, that's what I think about alchemy. I'm like, I'm doing equivalent exchange for this and that. You know, like, I have to have a machine on for a while and, you know, a few days or weeks, whatever the main case, for build up that energy there as well as other meditations or about to do a ritual sacrifice, whatever the case is, an energy has to be given there in exchange. And that's even when you work with the spirit, you know, your time with them, you're going to go through the change and sometimes you're not going to get what you want. I mean, that's actually, like I say all the time, because that's not true, but there's a lot of times where you think like my working with King Bella, 
I thought I wanted one thing, and what I got instead was what I fucking needed, and to become who I've always desired. So now I look back, I'm like, what petty things compared to what things that are grand and bigger than myself, you know? And so perspective too, man. So it's all it's all uh, interconnected for sure. That's right. Well, sometimes it benefits the magician to let go of the wheel and let the spirits that he trusts that have his best interest in mind or her best interest in mind, you know, take take the driver's seat, take the wheel and land them where they need to be. You know, like just because we're asking for it doesn't mean it's what's right for us. <laughs> <laughs> and and, you know, if uh, you're being like you know, strictly by the book, you know, you'll probably get exactly what you asked for, even if it's not what's best for you. But like, if you kind of, you know, build that personal relationship with the entity and say, Hey, this is what I want, but I trust yes. you. If this is fucked up for me, or if this is going to end badly, then don't let it happen. Like do what's best for me, please. <laughs> you know, and you give them a sacrifice and leave it up to them. Like what is best for you is going to happen every goddamn fucking time. Exactly. And that's why it's better to be more broad with the magic and certain desires. Like I said, that wealth right. It was I thought about so many things I could have it funneled to, but instead it's whatever you think's the best, Huntal Lock. Like I'm not gonna sit here and say I know I mean that's why I haven't gotten any tattoos personally, because in four years I'm gonna be like you fucking idiot. You know what I mean? Like how much dedication I have it so and even relationships, you know, that's what I learned right when I got into magic. Like I always thought oh, this would be the perfect ass, X, Y, and Z. And it's like less than three days. I'm like, the person's gone. The person's like, tells me they're not interested. I stop being interested. And it's like, you know what? Like, you spirits really give a shit about me because you don't let me waste my time. And out of that, like, take the wheel, you know? Take the wheel. And I'm just going to keep going and ascending. And that right ass is going to show up or it's not going to show up. As long as I am honestly fulfilling the path which my higher self wants. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, <clears throat> you just touched on a lot of things that make a lot of sense, man. I think we could go on about that shit all <laughs> night. Um, but yeah, uh, like, like especially, you know, I'll just say, like, when it comes to love magic, doing love magic for myself or someone that, you know, like, like say, I want to see like a friend or a family member find their special someone. It's to find their special someone. It's not to fucking like do something on someone specifically. It's like, hey, bring more love and lust and passion in this person's life. Yeah, and man. Like when you let the spirits choose for you, they definitely upgrade you, man. <laughs> they upgrade the fuck out of you. Yeah, I mean, why have someone that would be good for two years and you got someone that could be good for a lifetime? And yeah. why rush, you know, like the greatest things come with time. And that's something two people need to understand. Like self-development is never ending. So start that journey. And then when you're so focused on that journey, everything's magnetized to you because you're so invested and love yourself so much. And you, how is you, as within, so without, like you can't, your authentic self always shines through your vessel, through your, you can, you can put on a mask, but eventually that shit's going to be shattered. And as we have seen time and time again, especially in this small niche of a community, which is ridiculous to say, but that shit's going to shine. And so you better be true to who you are and your word, because not only like as a human to human does that matter, and you to yourself does that matter, but you and your spiritual workings of the other spirits, they see that shit. And they're going to be like, yeah, you're an actual honorable individual. Of course, I want to work with you versus... You're a piece of trash, and thank you for the energy exchange. I guess I'm going to get this for you, but they don't really, like you said, relationship versus transactional. And at the end of the day, this path, I think if you don't do relationship, it's not going to elevate you to that level, which if you really want to be an aspiring, amazing magician in your own life, making changes, I think that that's necessary. But I could be wrong, but I'm just speaking what I feel, you know. Well, brother, I, I think uh, that was all very well said, and that's a great place to end this. Um, Hell yeah, I, man. I don't even have anything to add to that. <laughs> you really covered that shit, and um, dude, I mean, you're speaking your own wisdom from your own life, so whether you're right or wrong, that's, I mean, that's yeah. a, uh, mm -hmm. 
what's right for you. So, um, you know, it definitely uh, sounds like a, a healthy regimen for others, too. So fucking hails, brother. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, thank you so much, man, for having me on. And everyone, again, well, I have a link down below so you guys can sign up for this group ritual. I'll have that and the juggernaut down below. And I have the dates and everything expires just so everyone makes sure. So anytime you see this video, you know about the dates. And uh, I look forward to doing this with you, brother. And everyone who hops aboard, like I said earlier, like this is going to be badass and exponentially push you forward. So definitely hop on on this. Because this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Fuck yeah, brother. I can't wait. It's going to be a blast. You have a great night. Thank you, you man. For watching. Leave us a comment down below and let us know if you have any questions about what we've talked about or if you just want to, like, give your opinion on something. Like and subscribe. Hail the Infernal Empire. Hail.